So if you will, guys, come on and share this broadcast. I'm excited about this word, a necessary inconvenience. Hey, Denise. So as we get into this word, how many of you feel like you're going through something right now that you don't know why? You, you look up, you say, God, I thought we had this behind us. I thought that life had shifted. I've gotten, I went around the corner. I'm, I'm, I'm past that. But you found yourself right back in something that's messy, something that is causing your mind just to say, what's going on? Hey, Miss uh, Desiree, God bless you. And how many of you can say, Carrie, I thought I was past certain things. And it seems like every time I turn around, it's always something going on, always something that's grasping my attention, always something that is hindering me or I feel like it's inconveniencing me. Where you at this, this morning? You can say, Carrie, it's like I don't understand why I have to keep going through these certain things. I'm, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm treating people right. I'm, I'm, I'm praying. I'm fasting. I'm seeking God. I'm meditating. I'm doing all the things. I'm supposed to do, but it seems like every time I turn around, something is always going on. Denise said, me, who else can attest with Denise and say, Carrie, that's what I'm feeling because I was going through some things these last couple of months and I lost my mother in August, had some personal things, been battling and I'm going, God, we need to talk. We, we need to have this conversation where you can tell me exactly what I'm dealing with because what I don't understand, God, is why am I turning around? And every time I turn around, I'm dealing with foolishness. That's where I said I felt that way all last week. You, you, you feel almost dejected. You feel almost like, you know what? I'm just going to throw them in a the towel. I'm just going to give up. I'm just going to say enough is enough because I can't take it. I can't take this, this drama. I can't take this, this just, just almost say crap. Let's just keep it real. And then you ask God, say, God, what's, what's going on with this? And God says, this is needed, Carrie. You need this for where I'm taking you. And I'm like, wait a minute, God, I've taken a lot of stuff to where you've taken me before. But why am I still needing things? Why am I still needing foolishness? And why does my soul need to be inconvenient? Inconvenience. Why does I need? To, why does it? Why is it a necessary? As God said to me, a necessary inconvenience. Well, my mind goes to the second chapter of Kings. What a great, a great, mighty man of valor, uh, Naaman. And Naaman was a soldier that was actually he was in the army. He was known as a great man, but he had a problem. Naaman was a leper. He had leprosy. And if you know anything about leprosy, leprosy is when you consider unclean and unfit. And the only way you can come back into society is you had to be sitting before the preachers or the whoever it was, and you was deemed healed, not cleansed, but healed. And thus that will allow you to come back into the society as known. So could you imagine a man of valor, you know, this mighty man who uh, was in the army of the king of Aram, and he was regarded as a master and mighty. He, he was regarded as someone of power. Could you imagine what it felt like to be someone of power? I'm burning up so y'all forgive me. Someone of power, and then you have a problem. So many people watching me right now, you have great things in life you've accomplished. You have a great successful career. You may have been a great relationship. You are great amongst your community, amongst your peers, but there's something underlining that people don't realize. That inside of you, there's this war going on. There's this battle, whether it's depression, whether it's you battling, you know, insecurity, whether you're battling backstabbing people or family members that, you know, you may be battling a divorce. You may be battling your own self or whatever it is. It seems like every time you feel like you're coming up for air, something pulls you back underneath the water and you're fighting. One of my fighters this morning that says, Carrie, I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of every time I turn around, I've got to go through another battle. I thought that God had you know, secured my victory with this last situation. And here I am again in the middle of some foolishness that I call foolishness. And then God doesn't answer me, but he tells me, Carrie, this is a necessary inconvenience. Who am I talking to this morning? Say, I feel like that God continues to inconvenience my life. Every time I turn around, I'm always getting something going on. And, and, if, and, and, and so Naaman, being a mighty man of valor and a master and, and all of this in his in, 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 in army, is now dealing with leprosy. And he hears about this person that can heal him. And he goes to the king and says, will you release me to go and get healed of my leprosy? And the king gives him 
um, uh, some, some, some tokens of gratitude, so to say, to give to the person that he's going to to get his healing. All right, now I want you to get this because this is very important. And when he goes there, when he gets to the king of Israel, if you look in 2 Kings verse chapter 5, oh, she's Miss Gal said, I carry late. When he, when he goes to the master, and he told the little girl of Israel, said, and this is in 2 Kings verse, uh, King chapter 5, verse 4. And Naaman went to the master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. And the king said, by all means, go, the king of Aaron replied, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left. And when he left, he took tally, he took gifts. But what's unique about this is in verse 6, the letter that he took to the king of Israel read, with this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you so that you may cure him of his leprosy. Now, what's funny is the little girl didn't specify who the man was in Israel that can heal him. So when Naaman gets there with the letter, and this is crazy, it says in verse 7, as soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robe and said, I am God. He said, am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? What does the fellow send? He says, what does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of leprosy? In other words, the king didn't take it as, quote unquote, being the man. But the king took it as, as the king of Aram poking the bear or causing him to get angry. So the Bible said he rent or tore his clothes, which is called Korea, which is a symbol of renting or tearing your clothing. Watch this. In other words, out of anger, he tore his clothes as to say, it's on. How many of you this past week, how many of you this past week could say, Carrie, I may have torn some things. I may have thrown some things. I may have hit the wall. I may have hit my desk. I may have said a few choice words I shouldn't have said because I'm tired. I'm tired of every time I turn around, the devil is always poking me and poking me. And all I'm trying to do is be a blessing. But every time I turn around, I'm getting poked because I don't understand what I'm doing. I don't understand why I got to continue to always be poked by God when I'm trying my best to please God. Hey, Janae, how many of you can say, yes, Carrie, that's me. I'm trying to do my best. I'm trying to read my Bible. I'm trying to meditate. I'm trying to pe treat people correctly. And when I do it, I keep getting poked. People keep poking the bear, doing this and doing that and trying this and trying that. And I'm just simply tired. Where you at? They can say, Carrie, I can attest. And so the king of Israel stood up. He did what they call, like I said, good Korea, tore his clothes and said, oh, so you know what? You try to pick a quarrel with me. Does it feel like sometimes that God would just feel like he's not satisfied with you and he keeps picking a fight with you? Sometimes happened to God doesn't pick fights with us, but it feels like it. It feels like my good enough is never good enough because God is always still picking a fight with me. But God is not necessarily picking a fight with us. He is giving us a necessary inconvenience because what I've learned, and I don't know if you can attest to this, but this is going to bless somebody. Uh, Sometimes we can get comfortable when God is trying to get you to the next level because you're like, okay, I'm better than what I was. But God is saying, but yet you still have ways to go to get to where I have you to get to. And so what you'll do is become complacent. You'll become complacent with where you are. And God says, unless I give you this necessary inconvenience, you'll be convenient with where you are. Oh, somebody better hear the man of God. In other words, you're saying, Carrie, that if unless God poke me, I won't move. That's exactly what I'm saying. Because if you be honest, many as you right now know that's more that God requires of you, but because you're tired of fighting, because you're tired of changing, because you're tired of always being the bigger person, sometimes you just want to get down nasty and dirty and cuss them out or knock them out or do like they do you. But God says you can't do that. But yet he keeps allowing the necessary inconvenience to push you to the next level. Mm. What God said to me, and I hear him saying it to you, is where I have for you to go. Hey, Jay, where I have for you to go requires more. And where you are in life will not allow you to sustain in where I'm taking you. In other words, where I'm taking you, unless you change.
you won't survive. And so God says, I must give you a necessary inconvenience in order to condition you for where you're going. So what are you saying, Carrie? We are in a spiritual conditioning through our inconvenience that are necessary. Somebody say amen. And so when the king read the letter, he tore his clothes. He got mad. But word got back to Elijah. And Elijah is over here, or some say Elisha. He's over here, and he heard that the king tore his clothes, and he sent a message and said, King, why did you tear your robe? Why did you, listen, this battle that you tripping, and he, you, you're not even, catch this now, the king, what Elisha was basically telling me is that you're not even in the spirit to hear what God is saying. See, what God is saying is, he came because he heard of the great man that can heal him of leprosy, but the king, because he was great in statues of being king, was not great in the realm of spirituality. Naaman heard about a man, but never got a name. Wait a minute, somebody got to hear me. See, some of you are getting mad because you feel like God is poking you and trying you, but see, you thought your name is important. It's not your name that is important. It is where God is taking you and what he's going to do to propel his name through you. So Naaman is going to Israel to see the great man, but the great man was not the king. The great man was Elisha, the prophet. Never, and I'm going to say this to you, and this is deep, and I'm going to preach this message one day, but don't ask a politician to do the work of a prophet. <laughs> don't ask a politician to do the work of a prophet. The politician was the king and he couldn't do what the prophet could do. That's why you got to make sure you're not asking people who are not called to do what God called them to do to help you get to where God wants you to go. Just because somebody's knowledgeable of a thing doesn't mean they're anointed for that thing. Oh my, I'll say it again. Just because a person is knowledgeable of a thing doesn't mean that they are anointed for that thing. You got to make sure you're not trying to get God's anointing from people that don't have it. I'll let that rest. And so when Naaman heard, oh my, what scripture are you teaching us from? Janae, I'm coming out of second Kings, the fifth chapter right now. We're, we're, we're down here. We're coming up down now to eight verse eight. All right. I know Rose, but here come the best part of this thing. So y'all guys buckle up because it's getting ready to get deep. So when Elijah or Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robe, he sent a message saying, why have you torn your robe? Have the man come to me, have the man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. Again, don't ask a politician to do the work of a prophet. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him. Go. Now watch this. Now, now that I am in Israel and I, I understand that I'm really here as the, 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 the girl said, there is someone that can heal me, but it's not the politician. It's the prophet. The prophet is beckoning for me to come. Let's all go and see the prophet. They get to the prophet. They get to Elisha and Elisha says to Naaman, go. Wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be restored and cleansed. Now, you guys got to get this. You will think that dealing with leprosy, being told there's someone that can heal you and getting to the city or the, the country that you finally get in front of the person that can get you healed, that he'll be, he'll, he'll be like, you know, whatever I got to do, I'll do it. So let me ask you a question before I go any further. How many of you right now, and I need you to come back and forth with me. How many of you need something from God right now? If you do type on the screen, I need something from God right now. I'll wait. I'll take a drink of my uh, lemonade while I'm waiting. Come on. Yes, Carrie. I need something from God right now. I need some. I, listen, I need something from God. I'm seeking God even as we speak. But how many of you can say, Carrie, yes, I need something from God. Type it on the screen. She said, I need something from God right now. Derek, I need something from God right now. Come on, I need you to make it known. James, I need it every day. Linnell, come on, I need you guys to put this out there because I'm going somewhere. Say it and proclaim it. Yes, I need something from God right now. You're, you're, you're making your request known, okay? Come on, make it. You don't have to tell me what it is, but I just want you to type on the screen, I need something from God right now. 
because what I'm ready to say to you next is going to determine whether or not you get what you're asking for. Come on. Come on. I got a few more minutes. Yes, I need something from God right now. Right now. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Right now. Hey, Miss Libra. Right now. I need it. Leslie said, yes, right now. But here's the thing. <laughs> Naaman got upset when he was told to do what was necessary to be healed. Could you imagine? So God is, I just had you to proclaim, yes, I need something from God right now. But do you have conditions on what or how you need God to give it to you? Mm. Do you have conditions in your mind and in your heart how God should give it to you? So I fast, I prayed, I've done the things that I felt should get me what I need from God. Here's Naaman, mighty man of valor, leads people. He's got a reputation. He now has leprosy. He's now in front of the prophet. And the prophet says, go to the Jordan River and dip seven times. Seems very simple. Dip, baby, dip, right? No. It says in verse 11, but Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, wave his hands over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. What are you saying, Kerry? Naaman had in mind the way God should heal him. See, you got to get this. See, many of you right now have not received what God wants you to receive because there's a necessary inconvenience to your deliverance. And because you have imagined in your mind how you need God to do it, you're not open to how God wants to do it. Oh, do you hear me? So we say, yeah, God, I'm open. I want you to give it to me. But we saying, God, I want you to give it to me like this. I want you to give it to me like that. I don't want you to give it through me. I don't want you to give it to me through an in, a unnecessary inconvenience. Are you hearing me? Many of us have not received what God wants us to have simply because we have stipulations on how God should give it to us. And what God is saying is, I've been trying to give you what you've asked for, but it didn't come wrapped in the package or, uh, or the box that you thought it should. So for that reason, in front of you is the next level, but you don't want it. You don't want it because you came to me with the idea of how I should give it to you. Somebody should say, ouch. Because if you be honest, you need something from God, but in your mind, you're already thinking, if I push my plate back, if I fast, if I seek his face, God to give me what I want because I'm being obedient to what the man of God said. Apostle Pope said, do this. And Apostle Pope said, do that. Or my pastor or, or my leader or whoever it may be, I was praying and I heard through the wind, God said, do this. And I was doing it. But what, we, what, what I've come to find out in my own personal testing is this. God said, my ways are not your ways. And my thoughts are not your thoughts. And the way you think and the way you think and feel that I should get you to the next level, you're actually in the next level, but I'm trying to condition you for the next level. Jay said, ouch. Janae said, ouch. How many of you can say, Carrie is stepping on my little corn? Carrie, I know how I want God to do it, but God said, you don't have a clue how I should do it. Because see, God said, you playing checkers, baby. I'm playing chess. I've already eight moves ahead of you with the one move you're about to make. And so what we have to understand is God will not ask you to do what you want to do, but he's going to do things to get you eight moves down the road with this one move. Come on, somebody should get happy. And so Naaman was mad because do you not know who I am? I'm a great servant of the king of Aram. I am somebody who, co who commands people. And how dare you? I have a PhD degree. I have a master's degree. I have, I'm over corporations. I'm on the five, Fortune 500 board of directors. How dare you talk to me any kind of way? And God has said, I don't care about your titles. I care about your purpose. Oh, somebody should get happy. I don't care about your titles. I care about your purpose. And here you are trying to throw into God's face your accolades of what you've accomplished on earth. And God is trying to tell you what I'm trying to get you to accomplish in the spirit. Because what you've accomplished on earth can't fight demons. But what you can accomplish in the spirit realm can chase demons away. And so God is trying to say to you, you're tripping because the man of God asked you to do something a certain way. You're tripping because I told you I'm not going to bless you with that. That situation, but I want you to do it this way. And you said, well, you know what? I'm just going to sit over here and do nothing because I feel 
that I've proven myself to God. I've proven that I'm worthy of this anointing. I've proven that God can trust me with his best. And God said, no, you haven't because you didn't go dip in the Jordan River as I told you to. You told me that it ain't fair. You told me that I don't deserve to be hurting. You told me to hurt somebody or get them back. And God is saying, but you don't get it. I'm trying to get you to the next level of the next level, but you're still stuck in your opinions. You're still stuck in your ego. You're still stuck in your status. You're still stuck in the very things of the earth that you've accomplished, but haven't accomplished nothing in the spirit realm. Somebody should say, Carrie, I tuned in for one thing, but I didn't understand what it meant about a necessary inconvenience, but I get it. God has necessarily been inconveniencing me because I wanted it my way. And God said, your ways are not going to have it. It's not going to get it there. You got to listen to what I'm trying to do because I'm trying to move you into a land of abundance. And you want a moment of happiness. So watch this. Naaman began to say, why not Ambia or Philippar? Why not these different rivers that are clean and nice? Why I got to go to the Jordan River, which is muddy and stinking and nasty and stuff floating down and animals walking through it? Why I got to go dip in that river? What are you saying, Carrie? Why God asking me to deal with that person? Why God asking me to go over here and talk to this situation? Why is God making me dip in things that I tried not to dip myself into because I don't want to be associated with mess? You know, association by assimilation? I don't need that. I don't want to be associated with somebody. And God saying, no, I need you to go over there and I need you to deal with that because that's what's dirty and I need you to dip in it. I need you to go over there and say, hey, my name is Carrie Pope and I'm just here to get what I can get. No, God, that's not me. I'm above that. See, Naaman thought he was above dipping in the river. But he picked in his mind the pretty rivers that a general should dip in. See, some of you, some of you, some of you right now, some of you right now says, I can't eat a Big Mac. I need to fillet me young because of who I am. I would never be seen in certain places. I'd never be seen over here. I'd never be seen in the projects. I'd never be seen in the food line. I'd never be seen in the thrift store. I'd never be seen in places because I'm above it. I wear Versace, not Versace. Come on, somebody. What are you saying, Kerry? Many people are stuck in their ego, and God's trying to say, let go of your ego or your ego in G minus, which is let go of your ego. He turned and went off in rage. And how many of you can be honest with Carrie? I got a little anger management problem right now. I'm kind of mad at God because God is giving me a necessary inconvenience and I'm upset because I've proven myself to God. Oh, I hear you, Holy Ghost. Somebody said you're mad because you felt like, God, haven't I proven myself to you? Haven't I proven my worth? Haven't I proven my loyalty? Haven't I proven my dedication to you? And here you are, God, still testing me with my past, still testing me with my... Come on, somebody. I'm still being tested by situations, and I don't understand why you're doing it, God. I've proven myself. i pushed back my plate. I've forgiven. I've fast. I've surrendered. And God said, no, you didn't. You, you surrendered a, a piece of it, but you didn't surrender at all. See, I had to learn this week when God, when God deals with you, and he's saying, I don't need any remnants of your past to go into your next level, so I'm going to cause you to dip yourself in something nasty to cleanse you. Wait a minute. You mean God uses nasty situations to cleanse us and make us look good? Yes, that's what I'm saying. God will take your current nasty situation and he'll dip you in it if you're obedient to what he tells you to do and you will come out clean. Wait a minute, Carrie. So when he left and raised Naaman's servant who went with him. See, it's good to have accountability partners to go with you. See, who's your accountability partner that'll check you when you need to be checked? Ah, oh, come on, come on, come on. Do you have somebody there to hold you accountable to do what you ask God to do? I need to know because God is saying, I'm trying to bless you. You're trying to check me and I'm God. I'm giving you this necessary inconvenience because I know what's necessary for your next level. Mm. So verse 13 says, Naaman's servant went to him and said, my father, if the prophet had told you to do uh, some great thing, would you have done it? 
See, see, that's that whole thing. We like greatness. We like grandeur. Grandeur. We want to do great things. And if I do, if, if the prophet tells me to do something great, then I would have done it. See, some of you right now are mad because God told you to do something nasty and dirty. What we call nasty and dirty to us. Go and ask for forgiveness from your ex. The hell I will. If anything, I wait for them to come and say they sorry to me. See, y'all don't want to y'all don't want to talk to the man of God today. Uh, go over there and ask them to to forgive you for your misdoings. And you're going my misdoings? Uh, uh, no, for their misdoings. See, how many of you can be honest with the man of God? Say, God, I'm sorry for arguing with you because I could be I could be transparent this morning. I argue with God. I tell him. God, I don't get this. I don't understand why I got to go through the mud, go through the mess, go through the, that's being drugged. What is the deal? And God said, because I'm trying to make sure that there's not any residue left on you. When I bring you, see, cleansing, healing. See, that's what God is doing. I'm dragging you through to cleanse you. Well, God, you ain't got to do that. You can just wave your hand over me and I'll be delivered of my attitude. I'll be delivered of my past. I, God said, no, 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 no. I need you to put in the work. And so the prophet's uh, 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 accountability servant said, hey, um, if he had told you to do something great, would you have not done it? How much more than what he tells you to wash and be cleansed? What more will it take for you to be delivered from what you're going through? In verse 14, he says, so he went down. And he dipped himself into Jordan seven times as the man of God told him and his flesh was restored and he became clean like that of a young boy. In other words, you may not like what God is asking you to do. You may not like the situation and the circumstances that God has put you in. You may not like the fact that your pride and your ego is being tested to the point that now you got to go and do something about it. Oh, somebody need to talk to me this morning. You may not like the fact that you're being inconvenienced by God. And he's sitting here. Not, you think he's not hearing you. But God said, no, I hear you. I just know what's better for you. And so I'm giving you a necessary inconvenience because I just want you to be obedient. And watch me cleanse you through the mess that I ask you to dip in. Come on. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. You remember the song? And many of us are wrecking ourselves because our pride goes before a fall. And what we have to do is understand, yes, I'm in a messy situation. Yes, what's around me is not pretty. Yes, there are situations and consequences that can come from what I'm going through. But if I just obey God, if I just obey God and dip, dip means to surrender yourself to the mess because it's in the mess that I'll cleanse you. It's in the mess that I'll purify you. It is in the necessary inconvenience that I'll establish you. Come on, somebody. After you have suffered a while, he said, I will, uh, I will cleanse you, I'll make you perfect in a sense. And, I, and that's in First Peter, I will cleanse you, I'll establish you, I'll make you perfect. God makes you perfect after you suffered a while, but the key word to this total thing is just surrender to the word of God. And surrendering is the hardest thing in the world to do. <laughs> can somebody tell, I'm preaching to myself this morning. How many can say, Carrie, yes, that is the hardest thing to do is to surrender. Because what I had to learn is surrender means to let go and go with it because God is the one that's undergirding us not the situation that we're being transferred through. See, uh, she said, I need something from God right now. Yes, this is what God is saying in Holloway. God is saying you must surrender your own thoughts, your own will, your own way. Dip in whatever I tell you to dip. Do whatever I tell you to do because obedience is better than sacrifice. He wanted to be healed, but the sacrifice he had to make was his pride. He wanted to be healed and cleansed of leprosy, but to do so, he had to go to what was nasty to cure what was nasty. Come on. I don't understand how nasty cures nasty. It ain't for you to figure out the, the biology of it, the anatomy of it. It's God's issue. You just go and do what you're told to do. And this morning, God is saying, I need you to put your pride and check it at the door. I need you to check your status at the door. I need you to check your degrees and your accomplishments at the door. And I need you to recognize that something ugly and nasty going on in your spirit that I need to heal you of. 
And the only way I can heal you of it is you have to be obedient and surrender. Who can say, man of God, you're talking to me? So if I were to take the two words, inconvenience and necessary. Now, I said this is a necessary inconvenience, but I'm going to use the backwards of the word. So I'm going to start with inconvenience. Now, the word inconvenience is defined as a trouble or difficult difficulty caused by one's personal requirements or comfort. I'll say it again. Inconvenience is defined as trouble or difficulty caused to one's personal requirements or comfort. In other words, you're inconvenient right now. And God is behind it. But then we got to put the word necessary in. And necessary means required to be done, achieved, or presented. God requires this. In other words, to achieve God's destiny for your life, inconvenience is necessary. Hmm. So how many of you right now hearing this message can say, Carrie, I can see why now God is doing what he's doing to me. He's not doing it to me. He's actually doing it through me. See, God is not punishing you. God is saying, I'm trying to cleanse you once and for all. But it's obedience or surrendering that I need you to do. And I know that your pride is damaged. I know that your inner man is over here going, now, I didn't do anything to deserve what I got, but why are you making me do this? Jay said, Karen, I can see it now. God is saying, I need you to surrender. And it took this necessary inconvenience to get you to this place of saying, I let go. The hardest thing for me to do, I, I, I'm not a swimmer, right? And I remember, and it's going to bless somebody. And if you know, yeah, I can't, I'm, I'm not a swimmer. I can't swim. I can swim for about two seconds, then I'll start sinking. Um, but I want you to hear this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Rebecca and I was in the pool, and Rebecca was trying to teach me how to float. And she says, Carrie, if you just surrender to the water, naturally you'll float. But it's when you feel like you're going to sink your mind is saying, I got to be in control or I will go under. So there's this fear of drowning. And because of the fear of drowning, your body can't surrender. Somebody hear me. And so uh, Serena says, oh, my God, I've been trying to avoid mess on every turn. It seems like the more I try to avoid the things. That's right. Like me, I'm trying to float, but I'm trying to be in control of how I float. Not understanding that if I let go, that's why when a person is dead in the ocean or the pool anywhere, they automatically float because they're not in control anymore. Their body has given way to nature. What are you saying, Carrie? If I could learn spiritually how to let go and just float in the waves of God, I would just, I've seen people float and they just, maybe you could do it. But when a person's in the water floating, they're laying back, they're at peace, their eyes are closed. And they're just enjoying the moment because they've given themselves over to the body of water. What are you saying, Carrie? Spiritually, so God is saying, I need you to close your eyes. I need you to stretch forth your arms. I need you to take a deep breath and say, God, I surrender. I don't have any mindset of how you should fix it. I don't have any idea, God, or any, 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 any input to give on how you should fix this situation or get me out of it. I don't have any say in God what you choose to do. I just surrender all of my retribution. I surrender all of my punishment I want you to give them. I, I surrender all of my ideas of how I should be successful. I surrender this morning, God, everything that I need to do that I thought to be successful. God said, no, I just need you to surrender, meaning let go. And just let me do what I'm doing. I need you to surrender. And how many of you this morning know this message is for you? That you need to surrender. Just like a person that's floating, you need to surrender. God is your life jacket, but what, what's the need of you trying to swim if you can just float? And so God is saying this morning, how many of you can say, Carrie, this message is for me. I need to surrender. 
I know God has me in a necessary inconvenience, but I, I, I'm struggling with letting go. I'm struggling with releasing. I'm struggling with just surrendering. I'm struggling because I don't know what God is going to do. And I don't, I feel like, I feel like that the enemies are feel like they're winning and I feel like I'm losing. I feel I'm afraid of what they can do. And God says, while you're afraid, I am God, not them. While you're afraid, I already know what's best for your life when you're in your mother's womb. Why are you afraid? I have already ordained your life from start to finish. So why are you afraid? I'm afraid, of God, because I'm not in control. That's the key. That's what I had to say to God this week. God, I'm afraid because I'm not in control. Because when you've been hurt before, when you've been damaged before, you want to make sure you can control the narrative so you can control how much hurt you endure. But what God is saying, Carrie, you can't control me because I am God. You can't control your situation and expect to get what I've ordained for you because you're not God. Meaning you're not the one in total control of your life. I preach the message title, I am in God, meaning when you operate in the power of God and your mindset is what God tells you to do, yes, you operate as God. But when you're trying to operate in your own power, you're not God. You've stepped out of your power, you've stepped out of your purpose, and you've taken on mere mortals, mere men, just being a mere man. And how many of you this morning can say, Carrie, I know what I have to do, but I'm scared. Because I, that means I no longer have input in how the outcome it happens. And you've never really had it, you just told yourself you did. I let go of what I cannot control. So this morning, if you're told to do, as his name it was, dip. God bless you, Riley. Fire wine, God bless you. I want you to stop and close your eyes. We're gonna close. I want you to take a deep breath right where you are and just lift your hands up and say, God, I surrender. I have no more gimmicks. I have no more games. I have no more input. I let go of any anger, any retribution. I let go of any residue of, of payback. I let go of God of jealousy. I let go of anything that is causing me to be in control. And I release this morning. Come on, lift your hands and just do this. Close your eyes and just see the situation that you're trying to control. And just say, God, I give it to you. I give it to you. Because I'm fighting something. Oh my God, I'm fighting something that's already been settled. I'm fighting something that's already been worked out. But I don't trust it because I need to be in control. God says, release it this morning. Surrender your will this morning and just float in the power, float in the knowledge, float in the will of God, knowing that there's an expected end that God has for you. One of peace, one of joy, one of prosperity, one of abundance. God, we glorify this morning as we surrender, God. We know it's hard to all of us, God, like myself, that are control freaks and try to control the narrative. Letting go is scary. But God, you've given us assurance this morning that this is your will. It is a necessary inconvenience. And so, God, as we release this morning, as we take a deep breath and just say, here it is. As we take a deep breath and just lay it at your feet, God. Not to give it a, a note that says do it this way, but just lay it there and says, I don't know what to do, God. I don't know the instructions to this situation. It's almost like putting something together with the instructions that you don't understand. God says, not for you to understand. Just give it to me. And I know what to do. We give it to you this morning, God. I thank you for this message. Thank you for the Abundant Life Nation and those that are watching that some are crying as we speak because they're afraid of releasing. But God, give that reassurance. If it was something great you told us to do, we would do it without any hesitancy. But this morning, God, releasing it, we're only scared. That's why. But today, give the reassurance, give the comfort. Let the angels be given and released to each person watching, God, that it give comfort that all is well. Let go. I bless you. I thank you for this message. We pray this prayer in your son Jesus' name and the Abundant Life Nation said, Amen. 
God bless you. How many can say, Carrie, that message truly, truly bless my soul. How many of you can say, Carrie, I, 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 I didn't understand where you were going with it at the beginning, but I can truly say now that I must let go. I must release. I must leave. Come on, who could say, Carrie, that message was for me. I must let go. I know for a fact I've been holding on to things that was not the will of God. I've been trying to control the narrative. And God is saying, no, Carrie, you can't do it. You have to trust me. If you, you can't trust God with some things and not trust with all things. That's what I'm having to learn. I've been in this thing for a long time, guys. And I still, from time to time, struggle with holding on to things. All right? Let's raise an offering right now. I'm putting put a link. That's right, Derek. We must let go. There's this link where you can donate this morning. If this message has blessed you, I want you to go to the PayPal link. So a seed this morning. Also, you can go to Cash App, which is the dollar sign, the Way Life Center, and so seed this morning. One of the things I'm learning from God is even when it comes to finances, let go. When it comes to situations in life, let go. We must stop trying to control what God's trying to do. God says some of you are multimillionaires, but you're trying to you're trying to scheme and, and, and come up with how to do it. God says it's out of just obedience. Just simple obedience. It's what you should do. All right. So the link is up. Again, you can go to the PayPal link, so see this morning, or you can go to the Cash App, which is the dollar sign, the Way Life Center, and you can sow your seeds this morning. And anything that you sow is a blessing. Many of you have been great blessings to what we're doing here, the movement. We're grateful. And, and if you're first time coming on, some say, well, what, can, I sow, can I pay my tithes here? Yes, you can. There's a link in the PayPal where you can sow your seeds and tithing. You can partner with us. You can do whatever it takes to, to, to be a blessing. We appreciate that. Because bringing you content of such, bring you, you know, we believe in A1 ministry. Believe in giving you A1 quality, not just in the message, but in the aesthetics of what we're doing. And so God bless you. Again, don't forget that this is the last Sunday here on this channel. I'll be moving to my new channel starting next week. You'll be receiving emails this week that will help you to get right to the link if you're not subscribed. But I want you to go with me. Don't leave. Don't leave me here. I'm not leaving you. I'm just, we're, just, we're expanding as I've stated. But I want you. Make sure you, if you haven't uh, subscribed, to subscribe so that next Sunday when you try to look for me here and you don't find me, you say, oh, he's at his new home. And you come there with me, all right? But if you go ahead and subscribe now, you get the notification and you won't miss it, all right? So God bless you. If you have any prayer requests, please send it to me at hello at carryapope.com. Again, hello at carryapope, A is an apple, dot com. Carry, K-E-R-R-Y. A P O P E dot com. And I want to pray with you. All right. Great segments are coming up soon. Again, Acts the Apostle, where we have a prophetic service where you can speak to me directly here. And I will give you what God gives me for whatever you're going through or dealing with or a prophetic message. You'll get there. And then Carrie's Corner is coming up with great insight and oversight about life and things of life. And then the Abundant Life Nation will always be here in the Amplified Mind, which is what we call Bible study but amplifying your mind to see things stronger and greater. All right? So those are things that are coming. Those are various segments that are coming to Kerry Pope's new channel. Be there with me, okay? So God bless you again. Blessings and abundance. If you haven't sown a seed, please sow in this morning. Visit our new, my new channel and make sure you get ready for the Soul Work Masterclass that is coming within the next week or so. Stay tuned. God bless you, Cena. Uh, Cena, God bless you. Cena, God bless you. So bless you guys. Bless you so much. Blessings and abundance. Release surrender because it's a necessary inconvenience that you're currently going through. All right. Until next time, Carrie Pope. God bless you. Blessings and abundance, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.